Hi, this is Sage of the Stage. I'm a vocal coach and musician. I teach solo singing, classical singing, and piano in music schools. So thank for stopping by. And just a quick disclaimer, my voice is usually not like this. You can check out my other videos if you haven't already. But I've basically lost my voice yesterday almost completely. I'm just starting to regain it. So I'm sorry. Try to bear with me. But I really wanted to do this reaction. Today, I'm listening to the live version of... Phil Collins performing his iconic song in the air tonight. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Of course, I know this song. I mean, I've heard it a lot of times, but most of the times I've heard it, you know, on, on the radio. I can't remember the last time that I really played it for myself and really sat down and listened to it properly. But I've never heard the live version as far as I know. So this is going to be the first time for that. Now, when it comes to Phil Collins, I know a couple of things. I know that he was uh, a part of the band called Genesis. In fact, as I recall, he was actually their drummer at the beginning. And then when they needed a singer, he started, you know, to fill that role. And he actually did an amazing job because this guy can really sing. Now, his singing is very unique, and I'm going to get into that in just a bit. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the meaning behind the song. It seems that a lot of people think that Phil Collins wrote this song about a guy who saw another guy drowning or something, you know, and didn't help, didn't do anything, and basically in that way kind of murdered him, right? And after that, that Phil Collins invited this guy into one of his concerts and shed some spotlight onto him and just made him embarrassed or something when this song was playing. Now, as cool and weird as that sounds, that's actually not true. I'm going to leave a link where he actually talks about the meaning of the song. It's actually from Jimmy Fallon. You can check it out. I'm going to leave the link in the description. But for now, I want to check out this live performance. So buckle up. It's going to be a ride. Let's go. I feel this is a different beginning from the studio version. The synth pad is a bit different. Probably just a, you know, bigger intro. Seems like this might be the first song of the set, of the whole concert. Ah, uh, I know this guy. I'm gonna tell you a bit about him later. Sounds like the first song, in my opinion. It's a really slow, like, build-up, you know? Anticipation.
let me pause for a second. Um, first of all, the song starts obviously differently. I think this is the first song in the set and they've changed the intro a bit. They made it longer anticipation you know, for the crowd. Imagine yourself being at this concert. If you were at the concert, I envy you so much. But waiting for this first moment when you hear a singer. I remember whenever I'm in big concerts like this, just waiting for those first sounds and waiting for the singer to sing a first note. That feeling is so magical. I don't know if you agree, but for example, I was in an Arctic Monkeys concert, I mean, completely different thing. But hearing, uh, you know, like, do I want to know, just the first drum sound, like, t -t 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 -t. that immediately just grabs you. And another thing that's really interesting, to start with a song like this, uh, some bands start with a faster song, try to, you know, kind of uh, fire you up. But I think it's even more interesting to start with a slower song and kind of... Uh, get a feeling for the pulse of the crowd because this song starts a bit slower i mean it's going to build up obviously and stuff like that but it's just a great first song to connect with everybody's heartbeats and everything but you know that's a bit more let's say philosophical now when it comes to the arrangement itself it starts with the synth pad and you can see the keyboard player uh, playing these synths but also playing these kind of percussive fills which are samples. But you obviously hear uh, the drummer, which I believe is Phil Collins' son in this case, who's a drummer and he's amazing. I mean, sometimes it's so hard to keep uh, a slow song so steady, you know. Uh, they're probably playing to a click track and stuff like that. But even so, you know, some drummers just get tired and get bored by playing stuff like this. But to me, these drummers are the real deal. When somebody can play a song that's slow and not get bored and play with uh, feel, not hitting it too hard or too soft. Now those are real drummers, the ones that you keep for the rest of your life, even if they're not your son. <laughs> but seriously, you probably noticed the Gandalf looking bass player. I mean, that guy is just incredible. His name is Leland Sklar and he was playing with Toto as well and a lot of these famous, you know, legendary artist and his playing with Phil is just iconic. I remember this video where he sat down and talked about playing Susudio, which is also a Phil Collins song, crazy bass line, just crazy thing. And the guitar player, just everybody's adding their layers until finally Phil Collins' voice shines through. And Phil is amazing because he sounds basically the same like in the studio version. Even the effects that he uses, he uses just a little bit of delay, so you can hear a couple of voices after his original voice. And there are obviously a couple of reverbs and compressors there, but I'm going to continue listening to figure out what exactly is the vocal chain that he's using. You know, at least what sort of effects that he's using. Now, the best thing about those effects is that they don't change your pitch. None of them are auto-tune effects. Phil Collins doesn't need them. These are just effects that help you sit better in the mix, that help your voice blend better with every instrument on the stage and just make your voice a bit more present. Let's continue listening. Listen to the delays. That's the story. Wow, cool. The backing vocal. Okay, so the backing vocal has auto-tune on it, and it's basically a vocalizer effect. So what does that mean? It, it's a kind of a phaser thing. This is what I'm thinking. The effect used on the backing vocal works in a couple of ways. First thing is that it changes the phase of the waveform a bit. Now, the phase is basically the ups and downs of a waveform. And if you just change them a bit, now I'm not saying switch them because that would neutralize them, then you wouldn't hear a thing. But if you just change them a bit, make one wave just a bit bigger and maybe not in the same spots, you get this kind of a weird robotic sound, you know. The other thing is that it doubles the take, but it just plays the second take a couple of milliseconds, maybe 15 milliseconds apart. And this gives it this kind of robotic, it's almost like two vocals are grinding uh, 
into one another in an audio sense, you know. It's not something that you can do naturally. That's why it gives it this kind of robotic sound. Now, the interesting thing is that it's not used on Phil's original voice. That will kind of make it sound weird, but when it's used as a backing vocal, it just helps make everything sound more thicker and it gives it this kind of haunting quality at least in my opinion and since the lyrics of the song are so haunting and even Phil's you know facial expression shows that it just fits perfectly with everything that's happening you can hear it very interesting Beautiful, beautiful, nice. I was just waiting for that part. I mean, is that not the best drum fill ever? I mean, it's kind of simple. It's just this kind of K-Man drum fill. It's it's simple, but it's so ah uh, so effective. Ah, I love when music is done this classy, this well. And another thing that I wanted to talk briefly about that effect on the vocal, it goes well with the synths because the synths are the pad instruments are already, you know, not an organic sound. They're not, it's not like the organ that you hear in churches, but it, but it starts from there. It's basically that sound manipulated to sounding robotic and sounding more electronic. When you have the vocal chain going through the similar effects, it just blends so perfectly. Man, I love it. Let's hear that drum fill one more time. That's, that's like an iconic thing. Get ready. One more time, damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's something multitasking. Gandalf. Nice. We're gonna get back to this part. just happened what just happened i mean i knew that phil collins was was a badass but this bad who oh man 
my voice is so bad. Uh, I hope that my voice sounds a bit more sexy when it's broken like that. <laughs> okay, just kidding. But honestly, Phil Collins, first of all, most of the song is in a speaking register, meaning that he's singing from chest voice. But this last part, he's using his mixed voice a bit, and um, he's singing very raspy. It's really a raw quality. I mean, and I always consider him kind of a rock singer. He's not, you know, he's not, I don't know, he's not a rock rock singer. He's more, more on the pop side, but man, he has the gritty kind of quality, right? He has that sandy kind of filthy sound, and I love that. Another thing that I totally forgot to mention, Phil Collins wrote every song in Tarzan, like the original animated movie. First of all, I love the animated movie, but the songs there are so good. I mean, Son of Man, Two Worlds, One Family, You'll Be In My Heart, you name it, those songs are incredible. I mean, they, they just don't write songs like that anymore. I mean, few occasions when somebody writes a song like that, but Phil Collins is just a genius. Now, it's very hard to sing and be pitch perfect and drum at the same time. Now, granted, when he starts, it's not a very d difficult drum beat. It's just tum ta, tum ta. You know, it's not too difficult. But these fills that he does basically do a polyrhythm with his singing voice because he has the syncopated vocal melody and the drum beat basically emphasizes the different parts of the notes. So the strong beats that the drum does and the vocal does are completely in different places. But at the end of the bar, or at the start of this other bar, the, the following bar, they connect. It's not an easy thing to do, especially when you're singing and drumming at the same time. I mean, what, what? So let's listen to it one more time. So still chest voice. So that's basically a polar rhythm. Small one going into a mix. Even that. And even a run. A small gritty run. Perfect. I mean, this guy is not a legend. Just like that. He deserved the title, a legend. And I'm so glad that I'm doing this video. That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh. Ah. I can't handle this. And building it up on the snare. Now, one thing that kind of confuses me, if I had so much, let's say, angry energy and trying to pour it out in a song, the, uh, the most uh, usual thing that happens in those cases is that it makes you want to speed up, you know, it makes you want to push, it makes, it, it just, you just want to read something, you, you want to go do something quicker. So it's very hard to be angry and stay, you know, perfectly in sync with everybody. So that's what makes this incredibly hard and beautiful. Look at this. And still, the, the hell? The hell? I can't believe this. This was a killer performance. And he's just noble. He's so modest. He just bows down like he did nothing, you know, like... This might be one of the best live performances that I've heard, you know? This is what music is all about. 
In fact, when I'm listening to a live performance, I don't really want it to be exactly the same as a studio version. First of all, I think live performances always bring out the best in musicians, especially if these musicians maybe were not the ones uh, recording the studio version. You always have to change something. It's even just a small thing, like this intro was amazing, but the outro was freaking incredible. I mean, the studio version is so good on its own, no question about it. But hearing these drums live and just everybody adding up and building up and building up. But Phil Collins, as I already said, doing these power rhythms and singing and, you know, singing, playing the drums, doing these runs and not being flat for a second. This guy's a badass. Wow. Wow. Now, now one thing that I want to say, I've been doing these reactions for a long time, but... I'm rarely this excited and, and satisfied by performance. This was definitely a top one. Not even joking around. This is so good. And I would really love to listen to more classic artists and songs, live performances, studio versions, whatever. I would really love to get into those songs that will never be forgotten. But the thing with YouTube is not always, but often, they don't really recommend older stuff, you know. That's why I'm often on a lookout for new songs that are kind of cool and maybe trending, but I would really love to focus on the classics like this. But I can only do it with your help. It will mean the world to me if you share this video. If I see that a lot of you really enjoy this video, it would really encourage me to do more videos like this. And if you want and could be a part of my channel in a more concrete way, because this video is gonna be demonetized and I have no problem with this. Phil Collins, especially when somebody as Phil Collins does an amazing job at what they do. And the live performance is so good. Of course, they have to earn all the ad revenue that I would usually earn. It's his song. Of course, he should earn all the ad revenue. But I'm also spending my time um, doing these videos. And, you know, if I don't have anything to back it up, it's just not sustainable. So if anybody can help in any way by supporting me on Patreon, and there you can suggest any song that you like. Let's try to make a community. I really would like to make a community of people that are involved and really listen to a song, really enjoy music, and especially enjoy classic songs like this. Let's build a family of real music lovers. It doesn't have to be even something huge, but let's start somewhere. I can only do with your help. Even just sharing this video would go a long way. So thank for watching. It really does mean a lot. And please... Let me know your suggestions. And especially if you become a Patreon support, there's a bigger chance that I'm going to do a suggestion that you suggest there. And what can I say? You look wonderful, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.